Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to another quick and simple invention. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but today I have a truly epic, compact, I don't know, whatever, pulse lengthener um, that is right in front of me, as you can see. Uh, it's crazy compact with a size of 6x3, and it is only one wide, as you can see. Um, it basically works as a hopper timer that was originally invented by Etho and I think most of you will know what it actually is, but let's just quickly go over it. Um, this one is a sticky piston, this one is a normal piston and that basically ensures that it is a pulse lengthener and not a timer. Then at the bottom we have two hoppers facing into each other um, and the um, delay depends on how many items you put in, so the more items, the, the more delay. And the maximum amount of delay is about 4 minutes, I believe. Um, and each item you add adds about 0.6 seconds to the delay. So it's not really, really precise, but yeah, it can create um, yeah, a lot longer delays than um, the conventional one with repeaters, for instance. Um, and Basically, what it does is it moves the block forward when we press the button. Then all these items from this hopper are going to transfer into this one. And once all the items are transferred, it's going to move the block back over. And then everything is going to move back. And once everything is moved back, this one will turn off again, turning off the output. And um, it will be in this state as it is right now. So let's quickly check it. We press the button. Items start moving over, so this one turns on. Once this one is completely filled, it moves back as you can see. And then moments later, it is empty and it turns off this piston. So, you might be wondering, um, hey, code, this piece of resin dust is turned on, but it doesn't extend the piston. Well, that is basically because from the moment this block moves back, this uh, hopper still has items because it's only moving uh, it's only just started moving back items so this piston will still be extended um, and it will also still be extended when uh, this one uh, just before the moment this one is empty so then it retracts but because this one was already turned on this piston isn't going to realize it has to extend so it's just going to stay like this and um, that is pretty much how the whole thing works. So um, this uh, button press uh, is actually not going to do anything about the redstone because it's already turned on. It's only going to give a block update because it's going to change the um, power of the redstone. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it also works as a block update detector. And actually, if we remove uh, all the items and just put in one item like so it's actually a very fast block update detector as you can see if you want to build this yourself I guess you can grab a screenshot because you can pretty much see everything like this so the only thing you need to remember is sticky piston normal piston and yeah that's basically it um, then I also have a second design, which is basically exactly the same thing, uses exactly the same amount of resources, but it is just um, yeah, only one block tall above the ground. So you, it's probably easier to build this one in survival, but it's not as, as compact as this one. Um, input is right on this block, and yeah, works exactly the same. So once all the items are transferred, the other piston is going to extend, as you can see, and once it's empty, it's going to retract and it's going to have the other one stay in a but power mode. Uh, so if you want to build this one, you can see everything like so. The repeater on the end is your output and I highly suggest using a repeater because the redstone comparator only gives out a uh, redstone signal of one in the beginning so if you want to detect the whole delay yeah it's highly suggested to use the, the repeater right after the comparator and that is basically going to be it for this tutorial i hope you all enjoyed this little video and i will see you in the next video